Shifting focus now to South Africa, it has paved the way for creating what are being called designer babies. I know the term might sound bizarre, but here's what this is about. In the month of May, South Africa announced a change to its national health research guidelines. This change, basically, may allow the country to become the first to support genome editing for creating genetically modified children. This could be a big development in genetic modification. Now, editing human genes that can be passed on has always been a controversial topic. Many worry about its social effects and the risks involved. Experts say that the surprising decision by South Africa to allow such research raises important questions about fairness in genetics. About the risk of discrimination and how changing human genes may impact society. The debate about gene editing heated up in 2018 when it was reported that a Chinese scientist created the first gene-edited babies using CRISPR technology, C-R-I-S-P-R. For the unworst, it is basically a technology that allows scientists to change an organism's DNA. It stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. The technology is basically based on a natural defense system used by bacteria to fight off viruses and other invaders. It has many potential applications, including gene therapy. The Chinese scientists reports say aim to give the gene-edited babies resistance to HIV, the virus that, cause, that causes AIDS. And by the time this was revealed, twin girls had already been born and a third child followed a year later. Was it successful? What were the long-term health effects for these children? Did they experience any negative outcome from the gene editing? We don't know. The entire case remains shrouded in secrecy as per reports. The announcement of the gene edited babies sparked a strong backlash. Critics raised serious ethical concerns about changing the genetics of future generations. They argued that modifying embryos should have strict limits because it basically raises important questions about how traits are passed down naturally. In fact, many noted that the reasons given for gene editing were weak since safe and effective ways already exist to prevent genetic diseases and this made the need for such an extreme approach seem unnecessary and flawed. Not just that, the scientists' secretive methods and lack of public engagement were seen as problematic. Considering the potential long-term impact of this research, public involvement and transparency are important in any scientific work that could have significant effects on the society. Perhaps that's why there has been outcry and backlash over South Africa's decision to change the medical research guidelines. South Africa's updated ethics guidelines for health research now specifically address research that could result in gene-edited babies. Just to be clear here, it also lists important criteria that must be met. These criteria include having a scientific and medical reason, ensuring transparency and consent, strict ethical oversight, ethical evaluation, safety and effectiveness assessments, long-term outcome monitoring, and of course, following legal requirements. All these criteria sound good, but they are less strict than those in World Health Organization's guidelines. And naturally, it raises concern about how well future generations are protected as gene editing in human beings becomes more possible. The South African National Health Act of 2004 clearly bans reproductive cloning and any genetic manipulation for that purpose, including human uh, embryos. But when this law was made, the technology to modify human embryos did not exist, which is why it does not mention it specifically. However, the broad wording is enough to include heritable genome editing effectively banning these practices, still the growing concern about South Africa's new guidelines are valid. It is valid. After all, there is a reason why over 70 countries banned this technology with none explicitly allowing it. While there are good reasons for supporting genome editing research, such as uh, developing effective treatments for diseases, it is unclear why there is an interest in promoting heritable editing, which basically impacts future generations. Why was this guideline change made quietly, as per reports? How many South Africans know that their country is now unique 
when it comes to allowing such controversial research. Have the risks associated with the technology, including its effects on women, parents, and the society in general, been thoroughly considered? These are some very important questions that need to be answered. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.